Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, our LinkedIn Tuesday session today. It's uh, October 20th. We're very, very glad that you are with us. Uh, for those people who are on Zoom, if you have questions anytime during the presentation, we ask that you just uh, open up the chat box, put in your question right away. And that way, when our speaker uh, pauses for just a second, he will uh, we'll get those questions asked. For those people on Facebook, if you will just use the comment box, that would be appreciated. And I am monitoring that feed. Uh, for those on Zoom, we ask that you go to the speaker view, which is in the lower left-hand corner, uh, where that red line or red uh, arrow is. There's a couple of white lines. You can grab that. Uh, you can grab that with your mouse if you're on a uh, PC or Mac, and you can slide it back and forth to make the speaker as big or as small, whatever works for you to make it easier uh, to view. Please note this event will be recorded. It's currently live on the uh, Facebook, currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Uh, I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, I started CareerUSA.org to help people outside the DFW area. Uh, I also wrote a book called uh, What I've Learned About Your Job Search That You May Not Know. Uh, I facilitate and lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I've been doing that since 2007, and I'll be telling you about our upcoming program at the end of this session. And then since 2017, I've been part of the practice interview team. Well, we have four different speakers who talk about LinkedIn every week. And the reason we do this is because each one comes from, or they're gonna talk about link from LinkedIn from a slightly different perspective. So uh, we have uh, Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and Kurt Vonnemater, who all will be sharing their things. Uh, each have one week uh, each month. so. Uh, hopefully, you'll come back and join us uh, week after week to hear slightly different things. I just got an email from Terry, who's our presenter next week, saying that he's totally redone his presentation. So it'll be, you know, a lot of new stuff uh, next week. And I know Locke said earlier that he's changed a few things in today's presentation. So our speaker today is Locke Alderson. He's a career consultant, recruiting consultant, a contract recruiter. He's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for your job um, for job hunting strategies that will get results. So Locke, thank you very much for being with us and uh, take it away. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, my bio is there on the screen, as you see, I've been a recruiter for 41 years and also a little bit of career counseling and consulting since 2001. Uh, there was an overlap there of about uh, 10 years and since, since doing that as a volunteer. So that's kind of my background. I'll go ahead and bring, share the screen. And I'll bring up our presentation for today. Wait a minute. There we go. Well, is, it, is it coming up? There we go. There you go. And I'll do the slides. Do it's a slideshow. If we go from there. So I can control that. And let me do this. What do I do to get the speaker view? Well, you don't have speaker view when you're the speaker. Well, I do, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's that's what I'm trying to get rid of, Jeff. I'll just pull you out to the side. So it's, okay. But why, you know, question comes up, why do people use LinkedIn? Well, one, it's the number one recruiter tool used by recruiters to find and source candidates. It started out as a, a networking tool for salespeople and, and marketing people to get in touch with them. And why am I getting that? So... Okay, to find candidates and uh, also and one of the reasons it's grown so exponentially. What am I doing, Jeff? I'm not able to, there we go. There are 750 million people on LinkedIn worldwide and 160 million of those are in the United States. Something's going wrong, Jeff. I don't know what's going on with this thing today. Okay. And originally, as I said, was a, a tool for networking for sales and marketing people. Recruiters quickly adapted it to find people because 
recruiters were talking to one another. That's a way they could find people with different advantages. And as it's used by as many as 90% of the hiring managers and recruiters, I've seen numbers as low as 85 and as high as 95% of people use it. So it's a very important tool in the recruiter's actual toolbox. If you aren't on LinkedIn, I do suggest that you go to YouTube. There are a number of ways that you can get signed up. This is just a slide that shows you how to do that. Just go on YouTube and click, you know, signing up for LinkedIn. <clears throat> it all starts with your profile. And again, as you see, your profile is similar to your similar to your to your resume. It has a number of things that are on it. There's a headshot that's there. There's your name. There's a headline underneath that, which is now it used to be 120 characters. I'm told. I think Terry um, Kurt mentioned last week that it's up to 200 characters. And there's an open to work box right there below that. That's something that you want to fill out. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit, about why that's so important. Well, one of the things, each value on LinkedIn as a tool, when a search is done on LinkedIn, there are a number of things that are important about that. Okay, so completing your profile increases your LinkedIn rating. There are certain things that are there. You want to complete each of the sections on your profile so that you'll achieve all-star status, and that's the highest status that you can achieve. You do want to have a professional headshot that's there. Uh, and a background photo. This background photo is not quite as critical, but it is nice to have one of those there. You can do it as a headshot. Jeff's got his. It has his name and his contact information in it. Other people have it uh, just, you know, something for their career field or what shows up in their area. The headline is the position generally that you're applying for. If you don't put a headline in there, it's going to default to the last position in your employment section, and that may not be what you're looking for. So that's a, an area that you want to do something with. There's a lot that can be done. Underneath your headline is an open to work section. If you have not completed this, even if it's not open to everybody, it's open to just recruiters, you need to complete that, add in the information. It allows you to add up to five job titles there where you would like to work, et cetera. If, for some reason, Jeff, I'm getting in all the head all the, all the stuff is showing up on top of it for the, the hosting. I don't know why. But the about section is your summary section and it talks about information about your career field and your profession. You want to use keywords in that. Your contact information in both the, the at the top of the screen and it's the first time I've had that. You want to have your contact information, your email address and your phone number in the top top one or two lines there, make it as easy as people as possible for people to get in touch with you. The more clicks that they have to do, the less likely they are to make those clicks. The experience section should have your job title, your description of your due, brief description of your duties and keywords from your profession. If you have an unusual job title, like member of technical staff three, explain in parentheses what it is in industry parlance, so that it's easy to understand by your reader. Your skills from your profession, are vitally important because those are your skills are one of the things that recruiters search on and endorsements. People can endorse you for the different areas of your expertise, your education awards and certifications and professional development. A lot of the profiles I've critiqued as a career consultant simply state somebody has a degree. They don't go ahead and add all the things that they've done since they've got their degree in professional development. Taking a LinkedIn course is part of your professional development. Other things that you do, you may have a certification in some things. LinkedIn offers some certifications when you, in your career field in a number of fields. And lastly, the recommendations that you can have. The recommendations are basically letters of references. They can be from coworkers and former bosses, people that you have worked with. For some strange reason, we're getting kicked out, Jeff. I don't know what the... Yeah, I think you clicked on something. If you need to, can you uh, just X out of the, the participant box? I think maybe if... How do I do that? Uh, there should be a little X in the upper right-hand corner. And up here? Uh, well, I mean, do you have the... Is the participant box showing up on your screen? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can just X on X out of it, and that way it won't pop up. Shouldn't bother you anymore. 
Okay. That's who's talking, I guess. And I'm still showing some of that, that slide share. Okay. So we've completed your profile. The next thing that you want to do on your on your profile when you look at it is your dashboard. It has some information for, about you on your dashboard. Who's looked at your profile? How many times you've appeared in a blog or looked at blogs and the number of times you've appeared in search appearances? If you click on those numbers, they will show you some things. The next thing we want to do is to show you that. The other thing on just below the dashboard is your featured section. You can include things like presentations and this presentation uh, that I did back in June, that version of it is here on the screen as well as one on avoiding the black, black hole, resume black hole. You can also have, if you have a designer or advertising people, you can have your portfolio there. Artists, the same thing. You can paste your resume in there if you should want to do that. Then when you click on the search appearances there, the two things show up. Where those searches work and what keywords they might have used for that. Again, you can see that recruiter on this one and the, where the companies, this will give you a partial list of, of target companies that you can utilize to find out people. They may be looking for a recruiter. In many cases, when they're looking for a recruiter, they're looking for somebody to help them find a job. But if you're looking for a recruiter, again, it's a way to identify that. Or where, the, if the company has identified you as say as a cost account, they may be people that are looking for a cost account so that you can zero in on something like that. Okay. The other thing, the keywords, those are the keywords from the search that they actually use. Okay, let's take a look at some sample headlines. As I said, if you don't put a headline on there, it's going to default to your last job title. These are some actual job titles that I've seen in looking at profiles through the years, unemployed or retired. They're very truthful, but the thing is they are not in the most positive light for looking for a job. This one seeking a new opportunity is a little better, but again, why not use that real estate there, that 120 characters, do a little bit of advertising. The only thing wrong with this formally a VP of finance is it uses the word formally. Again, that tells people that you're out of work. You don't have to tell them because many people today with a COVID-19 are looking for a new job or for looking for a job. This is a little better. Somebody's experienced as a media professional tells people what they're looking for, looking for a new opportunity. This one's a little bit stronger one, social media expert. Uh, I can't read underneath the thing. I don't know why that. It's there, Jeff. Seeking a new opportunity, has experience with print and digital media. Has got experience with public relations and corporate and marketing communications. Supply chain, this is a rather concise one. Supply chain, procurement and purchasing. Okay, that tells people a little bit about what the individuals, what their background is, maybe what they're looking for. This one, like a senior accountant, it amplifies that by including things like AR or GL, which is general ledger. It could be AR and AP, accounts payable, accounts receivable for financial reporting and cost accounting. An executive assistant. There are a lot of those out there, but by adding budgeting and event planning, those may be something that are important to somebody looking for an executive assistant. IT project manager. There are all kinds of IT project managers out there. This one has idle certification or at least appears to, has been a scrub master and was worked with agile methodology. The general manager manufacturing in aerospace. This is pretty definitive about what this individual is and what kind of background they've got, what they might be looking for. Let's move on and take a look at your about section, your summary in your about section. If you'll notice at the top of this section, there is an email address. Make it easy for the people to get in touch with you. It can also be at the bottom of your about section at least make it there because it used to be that the only the first three lines of your about section would show up without having to click and say, click on it and a statement that says see more. Okay, this one is a pretty good, pretty graphic description of a financial planning and analysis specialist. FPNA is an abbreviation, which is a searchable term. Again, in some fields like MBA or other terms like that, they're also searchable. But again, if you do use an acronym like it is here on the bottom of the screen, Spell out what, it, what the abbreviation stands for, at least once in two in there. You can have this be your 30 second commercial, as somebody some people have said, and the kinds of industry that you worked on. Okay, here are some other sample resumes. Notice that in a couple of these, it starts out with a first person. Usually in a resume, you don't want to use a third person, it's advised against, but I'm a grateful partner with a world class winning company. 
okay? Executive coaching and leadership development. And the other areas, say, of key competencies, the strategic hands-on marketer. Those kind of words in a resume that probably get shot down because they're too generic. They frequently don't have anything to support the statements. Nothing wrong with them, probably true, but you want to do that. And a passion for an opportunity. You can talk a little bit more about yourself and your passions in your summary section. Let's talk about skills and endorsements, Nick. That's further down on your screen. And you have a chance to add skills and endorsement. I think you can have up to 50 of those. And you can choose which ones you want. As you start to type in, say you click on journalism where it's a plus, you can add that. If you start to type in data analysis, you can type that in. If it's a term that, that LinkedIn recognizes, it will let you add it. If it's not, it will give you a red mark that is not available, okay? Again, the skills and endorsements, this is how it appears on my profile. You, LinkedIn will select the top three that they think are important. You can add a new skill up here, which is where the blue pencil is. This is the edit version. And the endorsements that are here underneath that, I was endorsed by people at Mullen International for career counseling and executive search and recruiting. Okay. The next one here is a see more. That's what we'll show you the next. Well, let's say that I'm not interested in having career counseling be one of my objectives, one of my skills that's highlighted. By going to the screen down here, these blue pens, blue push pin that is there, if I push on that, it will disappear and go down to the bottom of a page. Go back. The screen is so touchy. Okay, the bottom of the page, and I can push this push pin and push, have recruiting come up to the top of the page. If you come over to the right side and you hold your cursor down on the four lines that are there, you can rearrange the order of those top th of those three or any of the ones down below. But that's a way that you can highlight areas that you wish to highlight rather than the ones LinkedIn has selected for you. And that's kind of important because those are the skills that recruiters tend to look at. Once they've identified a candidate, they'll take a look at a profile and do an analysis to see what really shows up. The other thing that what we have on that is it has the number of times that somebody has looked at that or endorsed you for something like that. And you can be endorsed up to 89 times on this. Wow. Again, this is your public profile. Is your public profile really, really public? Well, you can edit your public profile on your profile page, on your home page screen. If you notice right here, edit your custom URL. Normally has names and letter, letters here. It may not have the dash, may not be all run together. It may have some funny characters as well. You can have a, a URL that's three to 100 characters. You can add if it were lock dash Alderson dash MBA or lock dash Alderson dash Dallas. You can add that. If your name is John Smith, it's probably not going to let you use John Smith. You may have to add something else to, to the end of it. If it accepts that, you'll get the green check mark. If not, you'll obviously get a red X. Let's move on to the next area. How about settings and privacy? You know, review your settings and take a look at what's there. These are some of the ones that you can do and you need to take some time to move over and take a look at these and change these or set some of these up. The next area is privacy and settings is who can see your profile. Edit your public profile. That will take you to the edit screen and has the little blue pencils along each of the categories in your profile. Who can see your email address? If you wanna be found, I would open that up and have it be available. Who can see your connections? If you're job hunting, you may want to close this one because recruiters have been known to build a candidate list. And one of the ways that they can do it is they find somebody like you and they can look at your connections and find others just like you for their list. The next area we want to talk about is how visible are you? How are you? You can't see that underneath there, but what do I do to get rid of that, Jeff? Sorry, I'm not sure what your, I don't know what your, Okay. We got that you covered. Okay. Underneath that, this is your public, is your profile really public, public visible? Okay. And these are a number of things that you can have that are visible. You turn these there's radio buttons to the on like they are on this one to take a look at that. But these are the different ones that are available to you. And letting recruiters know that you're open to work. It used to be titled job opportunities but you're now open to new opportunities. By clicking that, and by clicking open to everybody, you'll get that green uh, wreath around your picture. If you only want it open to recruiters, 
you can just select that one and that will not appear in your picture. It will stay active for up to 90 days and gives you the opportunity to talk about the types of jobs that you're looking for, both titles and whether it's full-time, part-time or temporary and location, how far you wanna to drive to work. Let your people know or let everybody in LinkedIn know. But if you let everybody know, you're going to have that green banner around you, around your name. Let's take a look at my profile one more time. Okay. You notice on this one, I have that green banner around my name. But again, there's the background picture that's there. You can have one that has a word cloud, a word cloud with all the keywords from your profession. Underneath your name, you have the 120 characters for your headline. There's the contact information that's there. Okay, and you can add profile sections and open to work. And this one, it's open to all LinkedIn members, as you see. Okay. But that's what a recruiter takes a look at when they first take a look at your profile. You wanna have a current position in your profile. Your current position, if you don't, that's a section that gets value. That's a value that's added. If you don't have a current position, you don't get the points for that section in your, in your, in your uh, algorithm when the search is performed. This one just has a title of a job that this individual is a project manager, program manager in the field of telecommunications. So it lists that the company is a person searching in telecommunications. This is an old slide. He's looking at the Dallas-Fort Worth area. This is an old slide, as I said, because it's 2017. I somehow need to update this slide if I can. He currently works here and he gives a brief description of his skills in that area but you get a value for the having that section in your profile. If you don't, you will not have one like that. Okay, so what are really, do recruiters really search for? Well, one of the first things that they look at, and we'll actually take a look at a recruiter's screen, is the keywords. They look at job titles, both your current job title and the past job titles in your headline, in your open to work section, and in the employment section. And the more matches that you have, the higher that you will rank when somebody does a search for, say, a recruiter. They'll take a look at your skills that you have, the industries that you've worked in. If somebody has a background in healthcare and the recruiter is looking for somebody in healthcare, even though somebody in other fields may have the experience, they don't have the telecommunication or healthcare experience, they will not be ranked as highly. And in some fields, that's a knockout factor if you don't have that experience. I know when I was with Siebel Corporation, they were purchased by Oracle and Oracle was still looking for a, a consultant in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So I ran a search up there for Siebel Consultant, had 75 responses, and that 25 of them had the word Siebel in their profile. The other 50 didn't, they were automatically eliminated. So that's some of the key skills and industry and experience the recruiters take a look at. Yeah, you stop sharing your screen, you'll have to share again. Okay. There you go. Okay, so how does LinkedIn search source? Again, LinkedIn gives a value for each, pro, each section in your profile. The values add up and when somebody does a, a search for say a recruiter, all the sections are added up, those values are added up. The ones with the highest score and a recruiter, those are gonna go to the top of that list of, of recruiters that are available. So all stars now is having a complete profile is one of the things that you can do. Having an exact match for the job title in your current and previous jobs and headline and the term that the recruiter is looking for. That you're open to work, that you've completed that. Recruiters, the reason that that's important is that you're open to work is recruiters look for the low hanging fruit. They look for the easy ones, people who are open to an opportunity. In today's market, that's not quite as critical as it used to be. But again, when our tight labor market, if somebody's open to work, those are the ones that are more likely to listen when a recruiter talks to them or reaches out to them. Having keywords from your profession. If you don't know where to go to find some of those, take a look at some of the job postings that you're looking at. They contain a lot of keywords for your profession for that job. Take a look at the skills that you have. What are the skills that you have? Mine might be recruiting and sourcing, talent acquisition, interviewing. Those are some of the things that I would use as a recruiter. The geographic location is important because recruiters have been taught by you as an applicant that they don't, that applicants don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work. So they, they put a limit on their search for 25 miles from the location of the job. And you may have seen that on some job boards that the default setting is 25 miles. And that's why that's there. So if you're open to working further, say you live in Denton, 
and willing to work in Dallas or Fort Worth, which is more than 25 miles, you need to identify that somehow. And your first and second degree connections and having a group of connections, you wanna seek connections. Over 500, which is the maximum that you will get credit for, is something that's there. And lastly, if you comment on posts and articles or write a blog or write an article and post that on your website. I know I put some publicity out for this session and I've had about 400 people that have actually seen that. So that's, that's a value that's added into my score when, I, when a search is done for a recruiter and I appear in that. This is what a search, actually a recruiter search on LinkedIn looks like. Recruiters have a, I mean, LinkedIn has created software packages for recruiters called Recruiter and Recruiter Lite. The recruiter, I think Kurt mentioned two weeks ago, that they pay $19,000 a year for their license from LinkedIn. They have access to the 750 million people in LinkedIn worldwide. And they, they look on certain things. Notice the skill, open to work are more likely to respond. The job titles is one that they look at. Location, where the job is, skills and assessments. Companies, those are some of the things that the recruiter can click, just check the boxes, and that will show up in what they do. Let's take a look at the search results. In this particular one, recruiter was looking for a product manager in the greater Seattle area. We had a background in product management, product marketing. And you notice in this particular one, there were 6,900 people that responded as candidates. And again, they're following a company, you have a kind of company connection and engage with your talent brand. If they're following your company, that's another value that LinkedIn looks at and observes. Let's take a look at a second search. And this one, there were about 43,000 people identified. This was for a product manager, a project manager in the greater Chicago area, had a background in business strategy and analytics, and they'd like somebody from Northwestern. Sounds like they're impressed with an MBA from a number of schools that could have put University of Pennsylvania or Harvard or University of California, Berkeley or Stanford or some of the schools on something like that. Only 83 of these people were open to new opportunities. And so that's the first list that probably a recruiter is gonna take a quick look at, okay? And they've engaged their brand. So 900 people are interested in working for that company or at least following up on information. They wanna know about the company. So that's another factor that recruiters look at. If you're interested in my company, then you're probably gonna have a more likely chance that you have an interest, maybe a background that's interested in my company, okay? Searching for jobs is the next phase. There are two things that you can do on that. We'll get into that. And these are some new slides that are coming up. When you click on the jobs tab up here, you can search for a job by entering the job title and over here a location. As I were to start to top in, type in recruiter or consultant, so I type in C-O-N, it'll be a drop down list with some artificial intelligence Different like consultant, consulting manager, contracts, or some other words. If I clicked on one of those from the drop down list, it would default in the location area to the United States unless I had already selected the location. You can create job alerts. Once you've done the job alert and you've collected that, notice the 25 miles are at the top. And this is a little tab up here that you'll want to look at a little bit later. We're going to do that. This was for a recruiter in Plano, Texas. Okay. So I wanted to do that. Well, I clicked on that and turned that on. It offers me the opportunity to get email messages, thumbnail sketch of the job posting daily or weekly. And I did that. And when I clicked on that, this is what it looks like on my screen that the radio button is turned on. Again, once you've done a search, one of the things that you want to do is to use a filter. And the reason being this allows you to refine the job search that you have. In most cases, you're going to want to select the jobs that are within the last seven days. Notice on this one for a recruiter in the Dallas area, there were 2,087 jobs that showed up. Again, I'm gonna to wanna to narrow it down to the fresh jobs, those within the last week, because the average response time to a posting on the internet is three minutes. And there can be as many as two or 300 that respond in the first hour. Again, something new that LinkedIn has added is some salary information. This you can identify and let's say I'm only interested in jobs that paid 120K or more. 48 of those 22,000 jobs paid that kind of money. Again, it's not all inclusive and some jobs do not contain salary information. So they may not get included that when you do that. Once you've clicked on that and apply, it will refine your search and take it down, as I said, to about, I think it's about 400 on that slate sheet. Okay, that are active jobs. Well, that's something that you wanna be aware of. If I don't like the results that I get, I can. I, there is a clear tab that's out here on the side and I can push the clear tab 
and clear that it takes me back to my original search of a recruiter in Dallas County. I could put Dallas or I could put Plano as some of the other ones that are available. You can notice the location where some of those jobs are located. Some of the jobs gives you the type of job. If I'm only interested in a contract recruiting position, I can narrow it down to that field or part-time. Likewise, you can see some of the companies and narrow the search down if you're only interested in typing a company like Texas Instruments or Medical City Healthcare. Again, you might have Medical City Plano or Dallas or Denton. Each of those has those. And again, you can select industry as well, as we see there, okay? You can optimize your search and you might wanna say, well, why would I wanna take a look at people? And this little tab over here, we mentioned, ja we started out with jobs earlier. Why would I wanna look at people, other people's profiles? Well, if you do recruiter and Dallas area and run a search, you should show up in that. Well, I probably will show up in about 1000 because I haven't been as active as a recruiter on LinkedIn for a number of years. I used to show up in the first two screens on LinkedIn. But if you don't show up in the first 10 screens and there are 10 thumbnail sketches of an individual on each screen, then it's probably time to do some work on your profile. And you can take a look at others' profiles and see what kind of verbiage and words that they're using and take some of those words and insert them in your profile, see if it doesn't increase your ranking there and bring you toward the top. Again, these are some of the searchable terms. If you use the search box up here and just use the search box, as opposed to using the jobs tab over here, these are the search, these are the term. The default, when you open the search box, and there's nothing there, you can search on just about anything. You can search on people, you can search on companies, you can search on groups or schools or events, other things that you can search on. So let's take a look and do a people search using just people in the name. If I type in the word lock, those are the words that come in. You see my name there, Lock Lord is a limited partnership law practice uh, and some hotels, well, that's hospitality industry. This looks like a company name and Locker Room. Here's another attor attorney and a sergeant door lock. So you can search by, for people by the name, just by the name in the search box. The next area that you can take a look at is searching for people in your network. Networking is right up here. You can check in your network. This doesn't happen to be my network, but mine is just over 6,000 of direct connections. And when you do that, you'll see that you've got some search with filters. Well, if you search with filters in my network or in a network, these are some of the things that you can search on, okay? But these are some of the filters for your search in your network. First and second degree connections that you're looking for, people in the Dallas-Fort Worth marketplace or Metroplex, and some of the other things that are there that you can search on and talent acquisition. So I want other people that are recruiters or talent acquisition specialists, okay? Searching for people to company on the company page, okay? You can go to a company page and type that in there. In this particular case, I had typed in Meta, Meta Electro, Med Analytics, which is a company in Richardson, just across Bush from Plano, where I live. One of the options gives, gives you the check on is to click on people. When I clicked on people and entered in the word recruiter, okay, in the box, it came in and showed me the recruiters at Med, Elect Med Analytics as the company. So that gives you a way to contact the recruiter directly on a position. Perhaps you can send your profile or your resume directly to that individual. In this case, this John Rowe is a senior talent acquisition partner at Thomson Reuters. That's another one from a different search that I did on Thomson Reuters. Okay, so things to take away from this scene. These are things to take a look at on your profile. You want to complete each section of your profile and use the name that you're known by. What do you want to be called by? I happen to be, my legal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. So if somebody, when the telemarketers telemarketers call and ask for lot for John Alderson, I typically ask them which one because there were three until my dad passed away. So use the name that you want to be called by. Make it easy for that person that's contacting you to know what to call you by. It makes it for an easier relationship starting. The headline, use the job title or titles that you're looking for uh, in a job. You use, as I said, have 120 characters that you get to play with. Otherwise, it's going to default to your last job title in the employment section. Uh, complete the open to, open to work section there. It'll let recruiters know that you're open to opportunities. And you can list five job titles there. You can separate them with that pipe character that I used on, the, on mine. Uh, and that pipe character is a shift key above the enter key on your keyboard. Again, if you use a pipe character or a backslash, 
One of the things that you want to do is a space on either side of it. So there's, it's a searchable term. Otherwise, if, it, if you had a pipes character right next to your or phone, it would not be a searchable term. So those are the things that you want to be aware of. Include your phone number and your email in the first line of your about section. Again, make it easy for the people to get hold of you. The more clicks that I have to make to try and find somebody, the less likely I am to make those clicks. Your experience section lists your job titles and your duties and measurable results. They add credibility to your experience. If you want to use keywords from your profession. You can use them in the about section. You can use some of them in your headline. You can use them in the job description areas. It includes skills from your profession. Again, remember the bottom skills on the, on the profile are the ones that LinkedIn selects, and those may not be the ones that you want. So select the ones that you want. I showed you how to do that. I think we're done. Anybody who would like the slides presentation, if you'll send me an email to lockalderson at gmail.com, I will be happy to send you the slides. I'm not going to have any thanks for, for asking. It's just going to have probably the word enclosed, and I'll send them to you. If you'd like to link up with me on LinkedIn, you can send me an email as well. Jeff, I'm about done. Okay. Uh, well, a couple questions here. We had a couple questions coming. Chris asks, for search information, is that something we need to pay extra for on our LinkedIn accounts? Uh, search information. You mean like a recruiter package? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm thinking when you're just searching jobs and companies, I think is what she's talking about here. Uh, rephrase the question, please, Jeff. All right. Chris, do you want to unmute your mic and... Give us a little bit more information. Yes, good afternoon. And an excellent presentation. But it was when you were going through, you had, you were doing different options for searching. Right. And either I'm not very skilled or, well, I, I will admit, I'm not very skilled in LinkedIn. <laughs> or it's just not visible to me because I don't have a, a magical paid account. So I did turn on the open to work. Okay. But I didn't see the other things like filtering and I'm, I'm not sure I have them. And I, I think- You have them, they're on everybody's account. Okay. Okay. We'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at you. Why don't we take a look at you and we'll show you what, what that is when we take a look at mine, but you wanna see how that's done. So that'll be the next thing they wanna do, Chris. Well, good question. Okay, we have another question here. What if you live, leave off the zip code so you aren't eliminated from the under 25 miles. Um, One of the things that you can do in your headline is you're open to that you're open to opportunities in Dallas. You can put that in the headline. Open to work in Dallas or in Fort Worth or wherever. Open to relocation in your headline. Remember, you have 120 characters. I think it's gone up to 200 characters because I revised my headline recently and ran over the 120 character limit. So you can identify that's a way to do that by completing the open to work section. One of the questions in the open to work section is where you want to work, how far you're willing to travel. That's one of the options that you can fill out there. Uh, okay, Catherine asks, are there extra filters for jobs only uh, eligible for the premium account? And I can tell you no, everybody no. has the exact same, uh, has the exact same options. So oh, filters. Now this screen that's up on, if you can see this recruiter search on LinkedIn, this came from Kurt last week. He yeah, has all you're not has, sharing, you're not sharing your screen right now. Okay. So I'll close that. Up. So uh wh while you're doing that, so Thomas asked, what's your opinion of using the green open to work banner on your profile photo? Some recruiters I've spoken to say it shows you're desperate. Um, well, that's a personal choice. Again, recruiters have access that with those recruiters that have bought the recruiter light or recruiter package, the software license, have access to that. Again, by opening up to everybody that you're open to work, to everybody, it lets people know that you're looking. And that's the way I would do it in today's job market, because there's a lot of competition out there for jobs. And, and if a recruiter goes and says it makes you look desperate, say, well, I've got a couple thousand connections and I want my friends when they see my profile to know that I'm looking because they may be able to help me when they see something. So, uh, you know, I would just go back to, you know, let them know, let the recruiters know that you're not, you're not desperate. You're just using LinkedIn to the maximum to get the maximum amount of people to know you're looking for work and trying to get help from as many people as you can. 
Uh, let's see here. Albert asks, in regard to posting, is there a maximum number of characters? Uh, so I, Albert, I assume you're talking about posting a, like a post or something to start a discussion. Albert, is that yes. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there is a limit of characters. If you go over the limit, it will uh, it'll tell you that you've over that you that you've gone over. I know I have that issue every day when I post about the upcoming uh, events that are happening, or when I post uh, the career tip of the week or whatever. Uh, I actually prepare everything in a text document. I use it on my computer. I have a TXT file, a little notepad document. I type it all up there, and then I paste it into LinkedIn, and then LinkedIn will then, if it's okay, it's fine, but then it'll say, oh, there, there are 35 characters over, so then I have to go edit it so I can get it down to that. So yes, there is a limit. Um, your next question is how best to start a conversation? I presume when you're reaching out to somebody? No, a general conversation. Well, I-, uh, for, I example, for example, for example, uh, we talk about coronavirus. Right. I or think green energy. You know, I, I, it's however, you know, I, I've heard that the best way to get people to read your, to read your information is to put an interesting picture with it. So mm -hmm. I've heard that as a tip from somebody else. So yeah, you know, can a picture and a text be mixed? Yes. When you do a post, you can type your post and then at the bottom there, it says you can add a photo, a video, you can add a poll. Uh, so yes, you can add a photo. That's what I do when I post the information every day about upcoming events. Is, it, a, is it useful to put uh, an at or, or uh, hash sign? Hashtags, yes. I think hashtags are very good. You wanna make sure that you are finding the popular hashtags. So I would maybe search for hashtags, see if they're really, if people are actually searching. Because what happens is if somebody is following that particular hashtag, uh, it will show up in their feed. Otherwise, you're only going to show up in people's, your first degree connections or first and second degree connections feed. Well, is it better when they use a new one, a new hashtag? No, I would always use what it always, what's already been okay. created. Same thing with job titles. When you start typing your job title in on Open to Work, take whatever LinkedIn gives you, select what there because those are the defaults, and that's what recruiters are going to use to search for things. So yeah, I would not create a new one because nobody's going to follow something that's brand new. Okay. Jeff, let's take a look at, at me on my profile. I think I've shared the screen. Is that up? Yes. Yeah, we can see you. I'm going to take a look at my profile and show you a few things. Okay. There's my background picture and notice my headline. Here's the contact information. A lot of you have not opened your contact up information up. And that's the reason I suggest that you put your contact information in the top line of your about section. Here's that open to recruiters only. I don't have the banner on this one now around my here around my photo there, it's there, but I could have that as well. But you can edit the open to work section right there. If we take a look at all the details, open to work, the location that you prefer, add a location by adding that. And I'm open to remote work, open to recruiters only, or change that here to open to everybody. Okay, moving further down on that, you notice the featured section on mine, I have the presentations that I mentioned, here's my dashboard. So we're looking. I've appeared in post views because I've shared about this presentation and the one that's coming up at three o'clock. But if we look at this, as I mentioned, these are what people, these are the, where the searches work, okay? And these are the terms that they actually, you know, what do they actually do? What's their function? Well, some of them were recruiters looking at recruiters or consultants. These are the terms that they use to look for people. We do want to look at a couple of resumes today. This is where the activity level, I posted some things. This is about the presentation coming up at three o'clock. This is the presentation today I posted, okay? This is my actual profile that you see. Again, on many of these cases, there's a see more button that's there. So if I were to click on that and see more or see less, the types of things that I've done for as an executive recruiter. 
the groups that I'm in. We'll move on to some others. Your skills quintile. If you take a skills test and you pass those, it'll give you the opportunity to take a look at those. Okay, and move those. Those are certifications that you can get. What have you been doing since your last full-time job? If I edit this, this is where I could click on a blue pencil, blue push pin, and move executive search down here if I wanted talent acquisition to appear up here. And again, by reordering these, I can do it just like that, put recruiting on top. I might move consulting to the top. Real easy to do that on that. And then the recommendations. These are some recommendations. I've given a few and I've received a few recommendations. Again, those allow people to take a look at who, who you are and what the things that you've kind of done on that. And the interest that you have in the groups job. We didn't mention groups, but on when you have that job, when you do a search, you can do a search in groups. One of the advantages of joining groups is sometimes the groups will have job postings that do not appear on LinkedIn, meaning that they're free. The jobs that are posted on LinkedIn, recruiters have paid $190 a pop for each one of those. The groups that you're following. So I could follow and I'm in a group of recruiters. And because I've done some work in outplacement with mortgage bankers, I'm a member of the Dallas Mortgage Bankers Association. I'm in careerusa.org, Jeff, just for you and for Lee Heck Harrison. And I'm with Oracle, are the companies I'm following. But let's take a look at some profiles. Well, we've got a couple more questions here. Robin okay. asks, I see some people have a lot of information about past jobs in experience sections, and some just have one line or even just a job title. What is, what's your opinion on what's best? A job title is fine. As I said, you may want to take a look at some people. If you do a search for your profession, let's say cost accounting, and you say Dallas area or Plano, and take a look at the list that's there. If you don't show up on those, you don't want to ask, one of the questions to ask is why, well, take a look at some of the profiles. What are some of the words that they have? In some cases, they may just have the title, the job title. In other cases, they may have a more detailed description. If I were looking for a material scientist, that's a pretty narrow discipline. If I were looking for an executive assistant, that's a pretty broad category of candidates here in the Dallas area. Well, I guess, let me take a little further. What's your opinion on job seekers how much information should they put into their experience section? Well, I would have the keywords from your profession, the things that you've done, and particularly if you have an accomplishment or two, what did you do about that job? Many of the, many of the resumes that I've reviewed and many of the profiles I've looked at simply talked about what somebody did, what were their duties? They didn't talk about what they accomplished, what were the results of performing those duties? Okay, uh, Sonia Lowry, who is the vice president at Lee Heck Harrison here in Dallas, I was on a conference call with her on Monday, and one of the things she said was she hopes that resumes go away and that everything you need to talk about is in your profile. Personally, I believe you need to fill out your profile with your master resume, everything you've ever done with all the search terms, the keywords, because if somebody's going to search for something, if they're looking for you, you know, a recruiter is going to go type in a couple keywords. And if it's something you've done, you want it to show up in your profile. And you want it to show up in your profile three to five times. So make sure those keywords are in the job description, that are in your about section, uh, maybe in a couple of the jobs showing something you've done. Uh, it, it's, you know, I think personally, you put everything in your LinkedIn profile. People who just have a job title, they're not serious about being on LinkedIn. Uh, maybe they've never been unemployed. Uh, maybe they don't want to be contacted anymore. I don't know, but put it all on there. There's no reason not to, because the more detail you put in there, the more opportunity you have for someone when they're doing a search, a recruiting package, doing a search, they're going to find out everything they need to know about you. Uh, let's see here. There's a uh, JC asked, uh, does the selection of casually looking in the open to work section cause you to show up in the, as the same as available immediately? Well, as a recruiter, I'm gonna go for the easy easy job. Somebody who's available to work, they're more likely to listen to my sales pitch. And that's what recruiters are doing. They're, they're screening you to see if you're open. So if you're not open, why would I invest my time getting to know you if you're not open to work? When I've got right. other candidates who are open to work. Right. JC, I would encourage you to join us in two weeks when uh, Kurt Vondelmater is back with us again on LinkedIn because 
he uses the recruiter package and we can ask him that question. I think it'll be a good question since he's paying the 20,000 bucks a year to, uh, to use the back part of LinkedIn. Sounds good, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Shelly said, cannot replace an old resume with a new one. Uh, don't replace an old resume with a new one. Delete your resume because you don't wanna post a generic resume on LinkedIn because you should always be customizing your resume for a job search. So just delete your resume, but make sure that you filled out your experience section with all the details. You know, everything that's on your resume, put it all on there so that you'll be searchable if somebody looks. Now take, uh, a, take a look at Jeff's profile, profile or take a look at mine and see how much detail. Some areas there's not a lot of detail and other areas there's a lot of detail. Right. I, I don't think you can have too little detail because what you've done, the more detail you put in there, the more search terms that could be what somebody's looking for. You never know what that one thing is. My daughter had an interview yesterday with a company and out of the blue, she happened to mention something just off the cuff. And they were like, well, wait, tell me more about that. You have experience in that? I mean, they had, she had no idea because it wasn't on her resume, but it was an area that really, I mean, she's, she has another interview lined up with the company again tomorrow because of, you know, you never know what it is. So all the details are always better. Uh, Locke, another question. Uh, what's the difference between when you click on like and when you post information? Uh, could you share? Obviously, uh, posting information has a higher value than just like. It shows that you've invested a little bit of time. And then LinkedIn captures that. They evaluate that, all things being equal. The fact that you have, that you have commented on that gives you a higher rating than somebody who's just liked, all things being equal. Yeah, I think the categories start that if you post something new, that gets you the most number of points. If you share somebody else's post with a comment, that's the next number of points. Then the next one down would be just to share something without commenting, and then just liking gets you the least number of points. I think it's so, on my screen right there, Jeff. Is that not shared? Uh, no, we're not seeing your screen right now. Okay, well, let me do that. It should be right there. There we go. Yep. So the post is the most sharing with a comment is the next best. And then just liking something is a, a little bit less. If when you just like something. So if you can, one, one of the, yeah, I'll, I'll just stop there. Get a comment. There's a comment right there, liking right. something. Okay. Right. So it's, it, you know, if you see something there. you like, comment on it. Here are some of the hashtags that are out there. You mentioned hashtags earlier. Okay. Well, these are the ones you follow. These are the ones that I follow. I didn't know I was following, but I'm following. <laughs> well, let's, let's, if we've got some time, do we want to take a look at a yeah, profile? Yeah, let's, let's look at uh, somebody's profile. So if they want to put your name in the uh, chat box and we will call up your profile and take a look if you want. As long as you're okay knowing that everybody's going to be seeing it on Facebook and YouTube and everybody else. Thomas first. Thomas F uh, U E R S T. I'm sorry. Oh, F U E S U E F F F. Oop. F U E. There you go right Thomas there. First, that one? Yes. Okay. Well, Thomas oh, well, what? Thomas has got a good background. He's got a kind of a wordle background there. He's got a good headshot. Again, we're not, we're not directly connected, but I can connect with him. If you do that with somebody, always try and say where you are. I'm just going to, I'm not going to add a note, but you know, met you on career DFW LinkedIn pre presentation day, like to join your network or something like that. But I've just sent him an invitation. But if we were to look at his connections, his contact information only has his LinkedIn URL. Okay, he could he could spell out Tom or Thomas first. He's shortened it to T first. Okay, so he might want to add that something on that. But his his connections, I can't reach out to him other than by connecting with him, which I've just done. That's pending. Okay, Let's see if he has in his about section his email and phone number. His about section is not the top line, but let's because the for only the first three lines show. 
It's at the bottom of his. I would tend to put move that up to the top. You can have it at the bottom as well. Kurt likes it. So Kurt says anywhere. I like it at the top because there will be some recruiters that you're not connected to directly. So are people that you're not connected to directly or that you're open to connection like a lion, which is LinkedIn open networker. Again, you want to make it as easy for somebody to get in touch with you as they can. Okay. The good information, good photos. I like he's got some uh, good activity or. Okay. And you notice here his jobs at Nokia are linked together with this, this screen out to the side out there. Let's take a look at his headline. Uh, he's got a lot of buzzwords there like IoT. Recruiters would know that's internet, technical recruiters would know that's internet of, fi of things. 5G is the latest version of cell phone technology, greater speeds. Okay. Lean Six Sigma, he knows something about that. AWS is, again, an abbreviation that recruiters recognize, which is Amazon Web Services, Cloud Practitioner, Scrum Master. He definitely, has gone, he definitely has gone over the 120 characters, which is fine. I mean, now that you've got the extra space, he's done a great job. Right. Very good. And he's got over 500 connections, which is another thing. So The only thing I would maybe change is on there, instead of product, product marketing, product marketer. I mean, is product marketing, is that, would that yeah, be a job a, title? That's a t Well, no, but it's a functional area of expertise. So it can be either a job title or a functional area of expertise. Right. Now notice if he has his open to work, it's closed to me as, a, as an individual on LinkedIn, but he may have that and it's open to only to recruiters, but that falls right in this area right here under, under Dallas, Texas. Okay. Do we want to do a job search or does somebody else want to look at their profile? Uh, let's do one more profile. I'll let you okay. get back up to the header here, go home. Okay, it's search for uh, JC. No, JC. P is in Paul. No, C is in Charles. Uh, C is in Chuck. C. No, JC. JC. Okay, space and the last name is S E P U. Yep, right there. Okay, good background shot, a headshot that's there. His contact information again is probably not open. Nope. Again, and normally I would not do that, but I'll just say, uh, notice in that in that box for contact information or content. Oops, I right, done. You want to do Control uh, Plus? I just did it. Somehow yeah. come away from me. Okay. So the other things that we have, we have somebody else. We lost somebody. Oops. There you go. His about section. Uh, he's used first person. He's pronounced. That's a good idea too. If you have a name that's a little unusual or difficult to spell, put it out there for phonetically so people know how to do that. Okay. He's got his contact information. It's down a little bit. So I had to click to find it. And again, I'd move that to the top. I would put it in your contact information. Go ahead and make sure that's in there because when you when you put your contact information in the about section, a recruiter has to open up your about section when they search for people. But when they, if you have it in your contact information, it pops up underneath your name, your job title, whatever the keywords are, and they see it on their initial screen, your contact information. Yeah, I think I'd like to do it in both. And I've got something set wrong. It must be because I'm seeing it on my personal page. My contact info shows up there, but not when Locke did it. So I've got something okay. followed so, up there. So it's in the settings where you have to go through and make sure that it's open for everybody to see. No, if, if it's if it's at the top of his about section, it does, nobody has to see it. That's why I do suggest that you put it right under the about section there. Right. Yeah, I agree. And again, I may not see it because you may have done it while we were talking today. Mm -hmm. And I haven't reloaded my computer, recycled my computer. So it may take a time or two to have that roll through. Okay. You've got a good looking resume. He's used, he's used stars, which is a little unusual, which means you probably cut and pasted this section in. You mm -hmm. use bullets. Again, the word processor within LinkedIn does not use stars, does not use bullets. If you're going to do the word processor inside LinkedIn, it will allow you to do a dash 
or an asterisk. If you use either one of those, be sure you add a space after it because if it's right next to a word, the word that it's next to is not searchable. So in this case, we're okay because we've got a space in there, right? You're looking yeah. good. Okay. Got a good looking resume. The other thing that you that I might suggest, again, this is a su suggestion that Terry Sullivan has, is never have more than about five lines of detail right here, four or five lines. Then have something in bullets. The other thing that you could do underneath this section here is facilities and process analytics manager is to have a bulleted accomplishment. What was something that you did? Okay. Now, what, what was the result of performing some of your duties? That's what an achievement statement is, or sometimes it's called a star statement. Okay. But you want to make it here. Here's improve labor efficiency by 35, 37%. Okay. So that's a statement that could but it'd be bullet. If it's on a bullet and it's a separate line, it calls attention to that. If you use all bullets, and I've seen some profiles that are that way, some resumes, which bullet are you asking me to pay attention to in the six to 10 seconds? So by making it a little different than the rest of that area, it calls attention to that. Good looking profile. Again, you have lean manufacturing, continuous improvement and process improvement. But again, these are the other categories that you have. If there's something else that you wanted to bring up there, that you could do that by clicking on that push pin. Notice out to the side, he doesn't have very many recommendations or endorsements in this area. Area here, he's pulled up, and then LinkedIn has pulled up probably the top areas for endorsement that you've received. Well, that's how LinkedIn makes that decision. Will you go back to the very top for just a second? I want to make a recommendation for everybody. Uh, flip your photo the other way because it sort of looks like you're looking off the screen. You want to make it look like you're yep. looking into the screen. So for everybody who does that, you know, your, your face is straight on, but your shoulders are turned away. So uh, just as, I mean, you can easily flip the photo, put it back on there. Uh, it just, you want to be looking into your profile. Great idea. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that one. And you can put some more titles in there. You can expand your uh, titles now that they've given you more characters. So, you know, put some more, a couple of keywords in there maybe that you want to be searched by or something. All right, well, Locke, thank you very much. I, we want to move on here a little bit. Let's see here. Thank you. Somebody else's profile, do we want to look for a job for somebody? Yeah, we've, we've got to sort of end here because I've got to get ready for our next session coming up here in just a, less than an hour. So uh, Locke, thank you for your time today. Uh, join us today at three o'clock, the Frisco Career Transition Workshop. It'll be session number six. Oh, it's not 10 six, it's 10 uh, 20 or 10 20. Uh, it's going to be adapting your salary negotiation strategies to COVID-19. So that is the correct title of the talk. It's got the wrong date on there, but it is going to be adapting your salary negotiation strategies to COVID-19. So join us today at 3 o'clock. Uh, Rex, Sayot, Rex Sayot will be doing it, and you can find the link on the Career DFW calendar. This session will be posted by Jeff on, on Career, what is it? Career, Career USA uh, YouTube channel. Org. Uh, link, I mean, uh, their Facebook page will be posted when he has time. It may be tomorrow because he has another session coming up. For those who would like the PowerPoint slide deck from me, it's lockalderson at gmail.com. Uh, other things we've got going on tomorrow, if you'd like to join us for interviewing Wednesdays, uh, we'll be on session number 12, how to deal with limited interview prep time, dealing with uh, that difficult interviewer and difficult questions that the interviewer may ask and cultivating confidence. That'll be the topic tomorrow at one o'clock. And then on Thursday, we have our effective resume uh, class. You're welcome to submit your resume. We'll review it online. We share some resume tips and a resume format and key cover letter that we really like to use. Uh, and then Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group, this should be an interesting topic. Networking over the holidays, even with COVID. Um, so this is the lady who's going to be talking. She usually comes every year and talks about networking from the holidays, but this year because of restrictions, it'll be a little bit different. So come join us this Friday at 9 30. Uh, all these sessions will be recorded, have been recorded, will be recorded, will be on the Career DFW Facebook page. Uh, I'll be uploading this presentation to the Career USA YouTube channel later this afternoon. Hopefully you follow us on Facebook. I hope you subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be appreciated. Uh, on the YouTube channel, this is what it looks like. If you click on playlist where the blue arrow is, 
up will come uh, six or seven different playlists that I've already put together. And don't click on the video, but click not don't click on the video screen, but down where the red arrow is, find the subject you want and click view full playlist. And it will then pop up all the different titles of things that we've done. So Locke, once again, thank you very much. Thank Just you. a reminder, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Locke doesn't get paid to do this. I don't get paid to do this. Uh, we're just here to help you land your next great opportunity. Uh, we survive on donations. So hopefully that when you do land your next opportunity, you'll remember us, you'll thank us for what we've done, you know, and you'll be able to help us to continue to do what we're doing to help others in the future. So uh, if your company happens to offer matching donations, please allow your donation to double in value. Uh, we are registered. If you don't see us, reach out to me. I'll get her name on the list. I've done that a couple of times in the past. So uh, have, a great op have a great afternoon. Maybe we'll see you at three o'clock today or one day later on in one of these future sessions. So uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you.